Well, hello and welcome, friends, on this Palm Sunday. As we begin today, our hand chime choir is going to lead us with a prelude reminding us to stand up, stand up for Jesus. So I'd like to invite them forward as we prepare to play. Well, friends, once again, welcome to worship on this Palm Sunday. I'm Pastor Jared, and I greet you in the loving name of Jesus and welcome you to this sacred time today. A special welcome to our friends joining us on the live stream. Whether you're near or far, we're grateful that you are here worshiping and participating with us in these moments uh, now and ahead. Friends, do you have your palm today? Yeah. If you're worshiping on the live stream, just go rip out your neighbor's plants or wherever you are. If you need a green palm, we'll use those in just a little bit for worship. Hey, it snowed overnight here in the first week of spring, right? Spring snow. Who was excited about seeing snow? Raise your hand. Okay. Who was uh, mad about seeing snow? And who was kind of indifferent? Like, eh, take it or leave it. It's good and bad, right? Well, I imagine that 2,000 years ago when Jesus mounted the donkey and came into downtown Jerusalem, there were some people that were really excited to see him, right? They were really excited because they had maybe been healed by him or heard his teaching that was so different from what they heard in the synagogue Sabbath after Sabbath. And so they came and they threw their cloaks on the ground and they grabbed branches, whatever they could find, and they waved it in the air and welcomed him into the, into the town square. I imagine some people were mad. They thought, hmm, I don't like what this guy has to say. I like things the way they are. I have power. I have status. And I don't want any of that to change. I don't want my life to change, right? Change is bad. And I imagine some people were just trying to get their bread or their millet or beans or whatever they were in the market. And they thought, what's that all about? <laughs> who's that guy? Is this another one of those prophets come into town who's going to get jailed by the empire? We shall see. Whatever camp they were in and whatever camp you might be in today, we are invited to remember that march, that triumphal parade of Jesus into Jerusalem. As we wave our branches and offer our words and our voices in song, as we lift our prayer and reflect on Scripture today, we remember together that covenant that Jesus renewed long, long ago. So friends, as you're able today, I'll invite you to stand for our call to worship. Normally, after our call to worship, we go right into our opening song, but today we'll hear the scripture after the call to worship of Jesus' triumphal entry. Friends, let all creation shout, 
Let us wave the palm branches high. Jesus is coming. He comes in humility to claim God's own. May he claim us this day and heal our hearts. Hosanna to the Son of David. Hosanna to the blessed Son of David. Amen. Hear these words from Mark chapter 11. When they were approaching Jerusalem at Bethpage and Bethany, near the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two of his disciples and said to them, Go into the village ahead of you, and immediately as you enter it, you will find tied there a colt that has never been ridden. Untie it and bring it. If anyone says to you, Why are you doing this? Just say this, The Lord needs it, and will send it back here immediately. They went ahead and found a colt tied near a door outside in the street. And as they were untying it, some of the bystanders said to them, What are you doing untying the colt? They told them what Jesus had said, and that he allowed them to take it. Then they brought the colt to Jesus and threw their cloaks on it, and he sat on it. Many people spread their cloaks on the road, and others spread leafy branches they had cut in the fields. Then those who went ahead and those who followed were shouting, Hosanna! Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the coming of our ancestor David. Hosanna in the highest heaven. Then he returned to Jerusalem and went into the temple. And when he had looked around at everything, as it was already late, he went out to Bethany with the twelve. Friends, this is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us sing Hosanna, loud Hosanna, as we wave our branches, number 278 in your hymnal. Listen, Robin, they were so eager. They just wanted to start singing. They didn't want to let you get through the intro. Here we go. Ready? One, two. Hosanna, la, Hosanna, the little children say, the pillar and temple, the holy and the rain, to Jesus who had blessed them. Oh, friends, why don't you bow our heads for a moment and allow me to pray as we begin this time of worship together. Loving and gracious God, we feel these palm branches in our hands today and we wave them in the air and we wonder, are you coming again? Are you coming into our lives? Are you coming into our community? We long to see you. We long for your presence. We long for you, Hosanna, to save us and to redeem your world as your covenant promised long ago. 
As we read your sacred scripture today, as we lift our hearts in prayer and meditation through the power of your spirit, may you speak to us and remind us that you are already here among us. You are redeeming your creation. You are saving us by the power of your spirit through your son, Jesus, our savior. So today, as we worship him, we open all of our senses, we open our past, our present, and our future, and we invite him to come and ride into our lives and your world once again. May Jesus, ancestor of King David, bless your creation once again. In Christ's holy name, let all God's people say, Amen. Amen. Friends, I invite you to take your hymnal and turns toward the back, towards the Psalter, toward page 839 and 840. Today we will offer in responsive verses Psalm 118 together. You'll remember that the Psalms are poetry and prayer, prayers from individuals and prayers of community, and many of them do simultaneous things at the same time. They lift up a longing for God, a need for God to come and to redeem creation, but they also praise God for God's mighty works in the past and God's promised works in the future. So I'll invite us to read this psalm responsively today. I'll invite you to read the bold print and I'll read the regular print. And we can hear in these verses the desire, the yearning of God's people for God's promised king to come again. The Lord is my strength and my power. The Lord has become my salvation. There are joyous songs of victory in the tents of the righteous. The right hand of the Lord does valiantly. The right hand of the Lord is exalted. The right hand of the Lord does valiantly. I shall not die, but I shall live and recount the deeds of the Lord. The Lord has chastened me sorely, but has not given me over to death. Open to me the gates of righteousness, that I may enter through them and give thanks to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord. The righteous shall enter through it. Let us turn the page. I thank you that you have answered me and have become my salvation. The stone which the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. This is the Lord's doing. It is marvelous in our eyes. This is the day which the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Save us, we beseech you, O Lord. O Lord, we beseech you, give us success. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. We bless you from the house of the Lord. The Lord is God who has given us light. Lead the festal procession with branches up to the horns of the altar. You are my God, and I will give thanks to you. You are my God, I will extol you. O oh, give thanks to the Lord who is good, for God's steadfast love endures forever. Amen. It's time for our children's moment, so I'd like to invite the children here to join me down front today. Jesus loves me, this I know. The Bible tells me so. Little ones do. Hello, friends. I forgot my microphone. Good to see you all today. So, I have a question for you. Think about a favorite character from a movie or a TV show or a book. Think about your favorite character. Who might that be? Julia, who, who do you think your favorite character is? Gabby Cat. Gabby Cat, okay. Adelaide, you want to go? 
Elliot, do you have one? No? Okay. Think about that character and think about if they were coming to your house. Ooh, that would be fun. My house would need to be flooded. Your house Ariel. would... Or Ariel the mermaid. Okay, we'd have to flood the house. <laughs> Let's talk about that before you try it, okay? <laughs> Ariel, cool, okay. What, yeah, what would, that's my question. What would you need to do to prepare for your favorite character to come to your house? Adelaide would need some kind of a swimming pool or a bathtub full of water, or right? A or a hot tub, <laughs> yeah. What would you need for Gabby Cat? Hmm. You need a house. A playhouse. A playhouse. She lives in a playhouse. Yep. Elliot? A lot of Nutella. A lot of Nutella. Yes, I'm coming to your house. Nutella. <laughs> Yum. <laughs> yeah, Julia loves Nutella too. Okay, so you'd need maybe their favorite toy or you'd need a place for them to hang out in like a like their um like a hot tub or a swimming pool. You'd need their favorite food, right? You'd want to make sure your house is all ready to prepare for them to come, to prepare for them to arrive so that they could feel really welcomed and special when they come into your house, right? My the person I would want from a movie would be like Elvis Presley. And I would love to meet Elvis. That would be so cool. And I would make sure my guitars were all tuned, right? And I'd make sure I had my, all my newspapers from 1977 out so that he could see them, right? And how he's fondly remembered in my heart. <laughs> We'd want to prepare like that, right? Well, today our scriptures shared that Jesus was coming into Jerusalem, into the capital of the nation. And all these people were excited about him coming. And so what did they do? They each took a palm branch. Here, Elliot, you can take one of these, Elliot. They took palm branches and they waved them high and kind of shouted, Hosanna, welcome, you know, save us, we love you, thank you for coming. You know, they were so happy to have him. They kind of formed a parade and they marched ahead of him and they marched behind. And then they took off their cloaks and their scarves and their jackets and whatever they had and blankets and they laid it out on the ground so that he wouldn't, his donkey wouldn't be riding just in the dirt or the mud so that he would be honored and welcomed and blessed as, as he would know that they really loved him and wanted him to be there. That's what it means for us on Palm Sunday. We have these plants just one time a year in church. and We wave them and we sing and we shout, Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. It's like our way of beginning Holy Week and saying, Welcome, Jesus. Welcome to our church Welcome to our hearts once again. So I want you to help me. Every week we've been putting something up here on the communion table. So let's put our palm branches up there to remember that these palm branches are a little bit of a sign. Yeah, you can put them wherever. You want to try to put them in the vase? Yeah? Or you can lay them in the front or wherever you want. Yep, yeah, just stick it down in there. Add them to the collection. Nice. Yeah. You want to put yours in there too, Elliot? Good job. These are a symbol and a sign, a reminder that we have welcomed Jesus into our hearts and our worship today. Now I have something for you guys to do during church if you're looking for an activity. We have these palms that you can take and color. You don't just have to color them green. You can color them whatever colors you want. And then if you want, you can cut around the dotted line when you get home or you can finish it at home. Here, take one. And you guys are sitting next to each other, so you can share. You can trade colors if you want during worship today. And then once you finish it, we can keep it and use it to decorate next Sunday for Easter. Does that sound good? Whoop, don't go yet, don't go yet, don't go yet. All right. Let's pray, okay? You ready to pray? God, thank you for these palms and these branches and the reminder that we welcome Jesus by uh, preparing for him to enter this holiest of holy weeks. Bless us now as we decorate our palm branches and go into the days of head, remembering his great love for us. In Jesus' name we pray, amen, amen. As the congregation sings, do you guys want to pick a candy to take with you? Peace, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. The Bible tells me so.
Okay, all morning I was fussing with these palm branches in this vase trying to get them to stand up and the kids just come in and pop them in like that and they don't fall over. I mean, good for you guys. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Well, friends, today we finish our worship series that, uh, called Remember, where we've been remembering all the covenants that God has made with God's people, all the ways that God has kept those promises and all the ways that the people just couldn't seem to keep up. And so today, we've read the triumphal entry passage, and now we skip ahead a little bit later in the week on that Thursday as Jesus shared that Passover communion meal with his disciples. And so our scripture comes from Luke 22, starting in verse 15 through 20. Hear these words today. Jesus said to them, I have eagerly desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I tell you, I will not eat it until it is fulfilled in the kingdom of God. Then Jesus took a cup, and after giving thanks, he said, Take this and divide it among yourselves. For I tell you that from now on I will not drink of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God comes. Then he took a loaf of bread, for which he gave thanks. He broke it and gave it to them, saying, This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And he did the same with the cup after supper, saying, This cup that is poured out for you is the new covenant in my blood. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. Today we celebrate the final Sunday of Lent and the beginning of Holy Week, the final seven days of the journey of Jesus that led to the cross. Sometimes Easter, our Christian holiday, overlaps with Passover, our Jewish neighbor's holiday. This year, though, Passover is much later in April, but still, last night on ABC, the classic film for this holy time of year showed, for four hours, The Ten Commandments, right? Did anybody watch it? Did anybody turn on for two minutes and say, I know this story. <laughs> this is too long. As a kid, I always remember seeing this film on TV uh, during this time of year. This is that 1956 classic with Charlton Heston and Yul Brenner. We've talked a lot about the Ten Commandments as part of God's long arc of covenants, how God desires to be in a faithful and loving relationship with God's people. We've learned a lot about the history and the journey of the Israelites, including this time period in Egypt. Even though the Ten Commandments tells only a part of their history and story, We've been reflecting on all the other parts of God's people's journey from the beginning of time to the time of Jesus. But this week, this is not the movie that came to mind as, we talk, as I was thinking about covenants. It was a much different film. It was this film called 50 First Dates. <laughs> 50 First Dates featuring Adam Sandler and Drew Barrymore. I know what you're thinking. He must have eaten some palm branches this morning because he's a little kooky in the head, right? Fifty First Days is a romantic comedy from about 20 years ago featuring two people, Henry and Lucy. Henry and Lucy hit it off one day, but then when Henry sees Lucy the next day, she doesn't remember meeting him at all. It turns out Lucy has severe amnesia from a car accident, and she forgets each day after it passes. Her memory resets every night as she goes to bed, and it's just like the day before her accident. She can't remember one thing from day to the next. Henry goes to great lengths in this 50 movie, in this movie, you know, 50 first dates, are you getting the title? In order to help her remember, remember their relationship, remember that he loves her and he cares for her, to show that um, he, he wants to be with her forever and care for her. He films himself. He films the two of them talking. He shows her these videos every day just to help her overcome her memory loss. And it's really funny, but there's a real sincere thread of love and affection and care between the two of them. It seems like Henry tries everything to help the love of his life remember their bond so that she will never 
forget. Henry and Lucy's relationship reminds me a little bit about God's historic relationship with God's people. God desires to be in a faithful and a loving and a sacred relationship with all of us and all of creation, but the people just keep following their own path. Some paths are more evil and disastrous than others. God's covenants that we've talked about with Noah and Abraham and Moses and David are all part of similar patterns. There's a call from God, a meeting. God helps someone remember what God has done or will do as part of this covenant promise. There's a new name or a new identity for the people. There's a symbol or a reminder of God's promises. The rainbow, the symbol of the Ten Commandments, the rule of the Sabbath or circumcision. But after every covenant, the people forget, just like Lucy. Like Lucy in 51st states, the people can't remember their connection. They can't remember the one who loves them. And for Israel, that forgetfulness leads to this self-destructive path of idol worship, of oppressing the poor within their own culture and community and nation. And that eventually leads to their defeat and their oppression by other enemies. The people lose their land. They lose their temple. But God, we remember, is faithful. And God gives them hope through the prophet Jeremiah. That's what we talked about last week. Now, for most of us, forgetfulness is pretty harmless, right? You forgot to set your alarm clock and you might wake up a few minutes late. You forgot to put the trash by the curb, but hey, that's okay. There's enough room. I, I, I'll be all right till next week. We can take care of it later. But sometimes forgetfulness is much more harmful. You might forget a turn signal and get in a car accident. We might forget to take um, a necessary medication for a few days and we wind up needing to see the doctor. You might forget a special person's birthday or anniversary and then you wind up sleeping on the couch, right? Sometimes forgetfulness is worse than other times. But for, for Israel, their forgetfulness is, is always, always much more serious. God gives this ancient law, these guidelines, these rituals to help the people remember that God loves them and that God has a special purpose for them. But they're tempted by power and foreign gods and selfish ambition, especially the leaders, and they forget their identity and they forget their purpose. And like us and so much of humanity, they yearn for that security and peace of a future, but they always go about it in the wrong way. And by forgetting their purpose and their identity and their special connection to God, the, they hurt themselves, they hurt other people, and they hurt God's desire to redeem and to save the world. In our study book that our Bible study has been reading, the book Remember, Reverend Susan Robe reminds us that we can be just as forgetful as God's people are forgetful about God and their connection. But she also reminds us that there's something that we can't forget. There's this yearning in us that we have similar hopes and needs just like humanity long ago. And so she writes this, if we are honest with ourselves, all of us are hungry for unconditional love and acceptance, for peace to rule our hearts for our, and our world instead of fear and anxiety. We're hungry for joy and true fulfillment. These are the things we share in common with ancient Israel. So how does God promise to help God's people remember who they are? What did God say to Jeremiah so that the people would always remember? God decides to go beyond offering laws and guidance written on stone tablets for people to learn and follow. God stops trying to go through just one man to get things figured out. It took God a long time to figure that out, right? Instead, God promises to write God's law directly on the people's hearts so that their relationship will be direct and holy. And God's people will know, says Jeremiah, they will know God in their heart and minds and souls. And God does this through Jesus, 
who John tells us is the Word made flesh. That was a connection I made this week that I hadn't really fully realized before. Jeremiah, God promises through Jeremiah that the Word will be written on our hearts. And then God comes to us in Jesus, the Word made flesh. The Word of God, the guidance, the law of love, the divine direction comes and is made flesh in our midst and speaks to us, living with us, teaching with us, healing with us, ministering among God's people. And God begins God's renewal of this ancient covenant by coming as a human into the world to be one of us so that we would remember and never forget God's steadfast love. Now, of all places, this covenant renewal of Jesus doesn't begin with a sword and a shield. It doesn't begin with some supernatural cosmic event that destroys the oppressor. God's covenant renewal begins around a table. As Jesus rides into Jerusalem amid the waving palms and the shouts of, Hosanna, son of David, save us. The people are looking for that ancestor of David to come and save them and be their military ruler. Jesus comes into the city and then you'll notice in the scripture, he leaves again. He goes, he checks things out in the temple. Yeah, I'm going to (laughs) leave. And he goes back out to Bethany. It's like he knows what's in store for him, but he needs some space and a moment to prepare for this next chapter with his disciples. So in Bethany, he continues teaching and healing. He continues coming in and out of Jerusalem as the city prepares for this special Passover feast celebration. Banquets and dinners always represent this type of fellowship that God desires for God's kingdom. And Jesus, we know, always seems to be eating a meal, preparing to go to a meal, or heading home from a meal, okay? He loves food, and he loves gathering around the table with his people. So after he rides into Jerusalem and goes back out, he gets the disciples together around the table in this room and commemorates the holy meal that the Israelites have been celebrating for centuries. Has anyone ever participated in a Seder or a Passover meal? either with a rabbi or a faith community or something like that. It's an opportunity I would love to have one day. The Passover meal of our Jewish friends and neighbors is the meal taken this time of year that recounts God's mighty acts of delivering the people of Israel from slavery and death in Egypt. Jesus touches on these themes throughout his meal with his disciples to help them remember and understand that the ministry he's coming and has brought and will continue is a continuation of God's work to be in relationship, a relationship of healing love for creation. So as the Passover meal evolves and his 12 disciples, including Judas, are around that table, unleavened bread is normally eaten as a reminder to them, a reminder that the Israelites had to get out of Egypt and flee quickly. They didn't have time to wait around for the bread to rise. But at this table, Jesus takes the bread and reminds them that he is giving his body, the bread of life, for their salvation. He says to them, this is my body broken for you. Jesus doesn't come and bring his body as a weapon of war, like some new King David to rule. Instead, he gives his body on the cross as a sacrifice of God's unconditional love. The meal continues, and it's a tradition to consume cups of wine, four cups over the meal. The third cup, kind of towards the end of the meal, is known as the cup of redemption. It symbolizes, symbolizes Israelites' physical redemption and rescue from Egypt, how they were brought out because of the plagues, they were let go, and then they escaped, guided by the pillar of fire and the pillar of smoke. The Israelites were saved by the blood of the lamb on their doorpost, delivering them from the first, he, delivering the firstborn Hebrew from each home with that final plague that struck Egypt and Pharaoh's family. 
And now among the disciples, Jesus reveals that this cup is the cup of his blood poured out for them, the blood of God in the flesh, given in love so that all might overcome slavery to sin and death. It's around this table that Jesus is helping his disciples remember. Susan Robe has this in her quote. This is important for us to sink in. Jesus wasn't beginning a new tradition. He was revealing in a new way the message that God had been conveying to God's people for centuries. The new covenant instituted at the table was the beginning of a new life a new direction, and a new identity for the disciples, for the church, and for us. This is why Jesus lifts the cup and the bread, and he says, do this in remembrance of me. When you do this, remember me. He's inviting them to remember He does not want his followers to forget. He's giving himself to his friends so that they will never forget God's love, as the Israelites have forgotten time and time again. So we know what happens after this meal. We will remember Jesus' betrayal and his arrest and his interrogation and torture and crucifixion. When we gather in this room on Friday for our Good Friday service, on the cross, God reaffirms the covenant, not with words like before, or a military campaign like the people had hoped for, but through Jesus, with God's own suffering flesh and spilled blood. The cross then becomes the symbol of the new covenant, the renewed covenant, a sign of the ultimate act of love by a God who will not give up on God's people. The sign of the length that God will go to to help his people not forget. The disciples very quickly realized that Christ's spirit was there guiding their hearts and empowering their ministry. Jesus had told them, the Holy Spirit, the Father will send in my name, will come after me and will teach you everything and remind you of all that I have said. Jesus says the Holy Spirit will remind you and the covenant will continue. Guided by Christ's Spirit, whispering and nudging and correcting and blessing as we all journey with God in faithfulness and love. How have you been nudged by the Spirit? How have you been reminded in these days of Lent about God's love for the world, or God's love for your family, or God's love for you? That is proof that the Spirit is continuing to work in us, God's law of love is written on our hearts. And when the Spirit prompts us, we remember that love so that we will never forget. As we've looked at each of these covenants, we've seen the power of remembering. God reminds the people of their role and their relationship with God. God remembers God's promise and continually delivers and saves and guides the people. Remembering is so powerful. It makes us better humans. It helps us rekindle our love of God and our love for each other. So I hope that as we enter Holy Week, you will take some time to remember. To remember that God's covenants, especially the one when Jesus gathers his disciples around the table. Those covenants show us that faith is not about perfection and always being right. Those covenants are more about a sacred relationship of learning to love God and to love our neighbors, of being nurtured by God so that we can feed our neighbors and gather them around the table too so that they can know in their hearts God's unconditional love. That love keeps reaching out to us because God remembers us. That love keeps reaching out to us as we journey on our path of faith. 
So in the week ahead, may we remember that sacred love. May we help others live and grow into that love and sacred union with the Holy One who remembers us all, who gave his life for us all, who helps us know that we are part of God's steadfast love. Let us pray. Jesus, as you rode into Jerusalem centuries ago and prepared your disciples for your death around your table, you shared a meal among friends, a fellowship meal that retold the ancient story of God's unconditional steadfast love in a new and powerful way, showing them and the world that you would give your life so that we would never forget. As we continue singing and praying, as we take step by step, day by day, into this holiest of holy weeks, help us never forget your love. Help us remember the lengths to which you would go to renew your covenant with your people so that we could be part of your work of redeeming and saving creation. Bless us now on our journey of remembering. Let all God's people say, Amen. Friends, thank you for all the ways that you give and support the ministry and the witness of this church. I'll invite our choir to come forward during our offertory time as we remember that triumphal entry of Jesus long ago.
Friends, as you're able, let's stand and sing our alternative doxology for Lent. Offering prayer. Almighty and everlasting God, as we bring our gifts and lay them at your altar, we remember the crowds in Jerusalem who laid their cloaks on the road and longed for a renewed covenant, shouting Hosanna as Jesus passed. We know they were looking for a Messiah who was different from who you sent Jesus to be. Search our hearts that we might be confident that the Messiah for whom we long is the one you know we need. Jesus Christ, your anointed one, in whose name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. Friends, as we go to God in our prayers of the people today, we'll be lifting up uh, two people during our prayer for whom the prayer quilt group has uh, created some prayer quilts that are available in, this, in the front entry way after worship. One is a prayer quilt for uh, Cindy and Mark Lampman's son and Jan's grandson, Evan, who will be having brain tumor surgery. Another is for Brianne, a friend of many in community band and community choir who will be undergoing a cancer treatment. So please uh, tie a knot or a bow in the, in the prayer quilts after worship today, and we'll continue to include Evan and Brianne in our prayer list in the coming days and weeks ahead. Why don't you bow your heads with me as we go to God in prayer. God of grace and glory, today we have gathered and with our bodies and our voices we have proclaimed that blessed is your Son, Christ Jesus, and blessed is your holy name. We have sung with joy, and we pray that those words and notes would awaken our ears to hear your word. We pray that you would awaken all of our senses to your spirit. As we rejoice in this day that you have made, help us hear the hard news to come, the hard news of Christ's suffering and death. As we celebrate your presence with palms and praises, guide us to live into your teachings, even when the path ahead is painful and difficult. May your presence flow through us and into this world that you long to save and redeem. O oh God, you are gracious. The stories of your covenants tell us that. You know our every sorrow and our every need. Help us remember the times when our strength failed us, when our distress led us onto paths of hopelessness and despair. And as we look back, help us to see where you have been our strength where you have helped us have hope. Forgive us when we forget or when we betray or deny you. And as we wave our branches today, awaken in us a resolve to be aware of your call, of your presence in our lives, like your disciples in that first holy week long ago. Help us stay awake, even when the days are hard and the nights are long. May we know your steadfast love 
and trust in your resurrection promise in the week ahead. Brother Jesus, may our welcome of you with palm branches and song also reflect our welcome of those in need of healing and compassion among us. We lift up before you friends and family and needs in our world. We pray for Bob retreating at the Buffalo, at Buffalo Hill. We pray for Katie. We pray for Will Lovell and family in the passing of his sister-in-law. We pray for Evan and Brianne who will receive prayer quilts and our love and support in the week ahead. We continue to offer healing prayers for Hannah and Mark, for Kay and Paul, for Ed and Joe, David and Thomas, for Stephanie and Sarah, Jim and Ivan, Jesse and Evelyn, Robin and Chris and Herb. We pray for others facing the journey of cancer, for Lynn and Cindy, for Annie and Katie, Murray and Walter, for Crystal and John, for Margaret and Lee, for Walter and Larry. We pray for all those who are affected by disasters in our world. We pray for all people facing violence and war and oppression. May your promise to come into the world as the Prince of Peace continue to show itself enact itself as you give yourself away for the healing of all humanity. In these moments of silence, God, we lift up other needs and prayers that weigh on our hearts today. As we've spoken the names of ones who are near and dear to us, who need your healing love, God, help us to remember that we too need a plentiful measure of your grace and your mercy. Bring us through this day and the week ahead with your comforting and guiding love. For blessed is Jesus. Blessed is he who has come and who continues to come into our lives forever and always. We offer this prayer in his name, praying as he taught us and saying together, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Friends, our closing Song today is number 2111. We sang our glad hosannas in your black hymnal. We'll be singing verses one through four. This hymn is so special because in each verse, it takes us through a different point of Holy Week from that Palm Sunday celebration to that passion narrative of Jesus giving himself for the redemption of the world. Let's stand and sing verses one through four today. Four measures of intro. <laughs> We sang our glad hosannas and waved our branches high, but some were silent, frowning as Jesus rode on by. They sought a royal savior, but. Be gone, you money changer. 
This is a house of prayer. Though many came for healing and stayed to hear His word, still others hostile plotted, and thus His death assured. We served Him at the table with would not believe him, but one by one that night, as soldiers came to take him, they scurried out of sight. We saw suffering Jesus alone without a friend, and heard the voices shout. Love's light grow dim and die, and cry, why did this happen? God, tell us, tell us why. You may be seated. Friends, as we prepare for the week ahead, our, our schedule is full of opportunities and uh, chances to be a part of Holy Week and to bless and serve our neighbors. On Thursday evening, you know, it's been our tradition for a long time to celebrate Holy Thursday with Holy Communion and our Our Savior's Lutheran friends, either in this congregation or that congregation. This year we're doing something a little bit different. This Thursday is the 10th anniversary of a Canyon Community Dinner at Hungry Horse Elementary School. So what a better way to remember Jesus' meal with his friends and his promises than to share a meal with our friends and with our neighbors and share love and kindness and compassion as a sign and a symbol of God's promise. So we won't have a Holy Thursday worship service this year. Instead, we'll gather um, and help prepare the meal and serve the meal and clean up for the meal at Hungry Horse Elementary at 5.30. Um, is it Our Saviors is hosting the meal this year? Yeah, So, but any volunteers are welcome, especially for putting up tables and clean up after, after the meal. On Friday is Good Friday, and so we will join in this church with Our Saviors at 7 p.m. for a Good Friday Tenebrae service. Tenebrae is a fancy Latin word that basically means uh, darkness or dim. And so we'll have a service much like lessons and carols on Christmas Eve, where we'll read a selection of scripture and then darken a candle, 12 candles total, um, over the course of readings and prayer and meditating on the final moments of Jesus' uh, life through the Gospel of John. So that'll be in here at 7 o'clock on Friday evening. Do we have any other celebrations or announcements to lift up together today? Yeah. Let's go to Jan and then Patty. Yeah, as everybody knows, my granddaughter Katie has been living with me for the last few months. And Katie has come a long ways since she got out of Brendan House. Her health has improved, and she just started a new job working with the Boys and Girls Club, and I have to say I'm very proud of her. That's awesome. Congrats. I think there's a celebration in our neighborhood on Friday. Bud Enderberg's having a birthday. Oh, happy birthday, Bud. Yeah. <laughs> happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you, happy birthday dear bud, happy birthday to you. Yeah. Yeah. Any other celebrations or announcements to lift up? No? Well, on Sunday, I'm saying this weather permitting, if the temperatures are too cold, we'll see. We'll gather at the Vets Home for Easter Sunrise Service at 8.45, and hopefully some Veterans Home uh, employees and residents can join us outside behind the building at the pavilion. 
uh, you're invited to gather back here around 10.15, 10.30. The men are hosting a small brunch with coffee and tea and some fruit and pastry items. And then at 11, we'll have our traditional Easter worship Sunday here in the sanctuary. Yeah, Patty. Yes, that's the last thing I'm going to say. <laughs> Thanks for making sure I remember and don't forget. <laughs> but before that, uh, one quick note on Saturday, the scout troop um, that meets here will be tearing down our deck on the back of the building in preparation for our new sewer project that will be happening starting April Fool's, J April Fool's Day, April 1st, right? Hopefully there's no jokes about surprise fines and costs, but, that, uh, but they'll be tearing that down on Saturday morning. So if you come by and you see things flying into the alley, yeah. don't sweat it. <laughs> it's okay. Thanks to Chris and Andy and some of our other neighbors for helping to move the shed away from that area in preparation for that project. It'll be uh, over and done before we know it, hopefully, and we'll be, we'll be moving right along connected to the city sewer system. And today, if you brought your 40 for the food bank items, we'll be caravanning after worship uh, over to the food bank. And I think Jan will be letting us in the building and, and Cindy too, <laughs> and Katie, and helping us uh, unload items and onto carts and bring them into the building for the food bank. Which door? I think the back door, not the front door, right? The loading dock door? Loading dock door on the east side. Good question. Thank you. If you have some extra room in your car and you're headed over there, we have a lot of items at the front entry. Maybe you could grab an extra bag or a case and help us move those items over there as well today. Well, friends, as we've celebrated and remembered the covenants of God throughout all of Israel's history, we're reminded that God just seems to keep doing the same thing God's always been up to trying to show us all the ways that God loves us, trying to demonstrate God's faithful promises to us, rescue us, save us, help us, and heal us. And through Jesus and the new covenant instituted around the table 2,000 years ago, Jesus showed the next chapter of how God would give God's self to us to save the world. We'll celebrate that miracle and that promise next Sunday in worship. Receive this benediction now as we conclude. Friends, remember that Christ is going before us even now on the road to the cross. Christ goes before us as the way and the truth and the life, renewing the covenant once and for all with his body and his blood and his life. Let us remember and feel the light of his love even as we enter dark moments during Holy Week. The resurrection is a promise that our God is faithful to keep. Go now in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.